along with writing your own JavaScript to handle all the custom behaviors that you want. You'll often find yourself wanting to use modules that other people have written, not just jQuery, to tie in to your website and give you slick stuff. In this video, we're going to look at using Colorbox, which you can use to create nifty behaviors for images and other content. So scrolling down on this page, here's a little miniature photo gallery, and you can see at the bottom that we're linking to an image with each of these. And you can see it pops up in this nice box. This is Colorbox. If we refer to a version of this where JavaScript is disabled, and I scroll down, we still get a link to the actual file, but it's not nearly as nice. So as I say, we are using Colorbox for this. There are probably dozens upon dozens of modules that can do this with JavaScript, but I happen to like Colorbox. And here's its link. And you can see a few demos of how it works here on that website. Different styles, and you can use Colorbox with all kinds of different content, including outside HTML loaded via Ajax, inline HTML, and photos can be grouped into slideshows with various transition effects and so forth. So it's very flexible in its appearance and it's also very flexible programmatically. So just about anything that you could ever want to do with a behavior of this type, with these kind of light boxes, Colorbox can do. I definitely think it's really nice. So let's see how to add that into this page. The first thing that you would do is you'd get your downloaded distribution of Colorbox. It's included with this project. But then you just put it someplace where your project can access it. And of course, you'll need to read the documentation about what files you need to include. But in the case of Colorbox, we have a CSS file and then a JavaScript file. Generally speaking, you're going to want to include the .min version of any downloaded library. I'll just quick look this so you can see the difference. So it looks like a mess, but it is quite a lot smaller than the version that's actually readable. You can see it's less than half the size. And Colorbox also comes with a set of image assets that are used to make it look how it does. So once you've gotten Colorbox, you'd need to include all of its assets in the right place in your files. And that's already taken care of here in this index file. Here's the Colorbox style sheet. And then scrolling down to the bottom of the page, here's jQuery, upon which Colorbox depends. And then Colorbox is loaded. And then finally, our custom file. And here's the markup that we'll be dealing with right here in this gallery div tag. So when you're working with a module like Colorbox and you're using it to load images, pretty much all the modules like it that I've used assume that you have an image tag with a link wrapped around it that links from a smaller version to a big version or maybe just to the same image. But it expects that you have image tags wrapped in links. And oftentimes it'll be expected that you add a particular attribute. In this case, you can use a class. With some of them, it's a rel attribute. But this kind of HTML is the easiest with which to use something like Colorbox. So now we can take a look at the actual JavaScript that we use to make all this happen. And as you can see, it's quite short. If we refer back to the Colorbox website, the usage example right here is also quite short. All we need to do is select the actual images and then call the colorbox method on the selected jQuery object. And we can pass to that colorbox function an object. This is optional. It has a bunch of default settings. But you can pass it some settings that tell it exactly how you want the thing to work. We're setting a few for appearance and also something to tell it what class to look at. But what I really want to note in the way that this works is this pattern. So what we've done here is we've selected first an ID. This is by far the most performant way of working with jQuery or really with any DOM selection is to start out with the nearest ID that you can get to the item that you want to operate on. So in our case, there aren't a lot of IDs in this markup. There are classes, but it takes a little while going up the document before we finally get to an ID. We have to get all the way up to primary up here. So ideally, we'd like an ID that was nearer. We could use an ID down here. In this example markup, we don't have one. It's a static page, so it would be easy enough to add. But I've set it up this way 
so that if you're dealing with a situation where your content management system or whatever it is that's generating your HTML markup for you doesn't generate IDs, it only generates classes, this will still work for you. So you grab the nearest ID that you can, and then you use the jQuery find method to refine that. So in this case, we're grabbing an ID and then finding inside that selected object something that satisfies this selector. So we go down through content, and then down to gallery, and then down to gal. And then on that, we call color box. And these properties on that object, rel refers to the grouping class that you're going to use for your selected items. And then these all deal with appearance. And you can look at the color box documentation to see what these all mean. But the end result is that we can click one of these photos, and then we get this grouped version with these arrows. So I can page through all three of them without having to close it and then click the next one. And so following this pattern, you can install pretty much any JavaScript module that's available and put it on your site and configure it as you need to. All of the good ones will provide you with decent documentation on how to use them, but the general pattern is pretty much always the same. You include in your source file the scripts in the right place, any attendant CSS that you need, and then in your own scripts, you just use whatever method is available. Colorbox happens to require jQuery, so we use the jQuery method. Not all of these modules do require jQuery, but that's how you can use Colorbox specifically to set up lightbox behavior on your image tags.